you know, I'm I'm hearing a lot of good stuff to be honest with you. I'm I'm over here smiling as I'm listening to this because <laughs> I'm sensing a strong connection between the two of you. And, <laughs> uh, so Tony, she does a lot of joking, right? But behind her jokes is the authenticity behind her jokes. So it's not that, it's not that the jokes aren't real and it's not that the jokes aren't funny, but she is telling us a story on her jokes. You got to listen mm-hmm. closely to them, right? But there is a strong connection between you two, and I applaud you. Man, hats off to you, bro, for going to put gas, giving somebody else some gas, man. I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, and as a man, I'm just being honest. I have never seen that. If just being honest, um, yeah, because you know, I wouldn't have did that. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't have done it. Um, I, I probably would have. I probably would have helped them out. <laughs> I probably would have. Them out. Hey, I probably would have sent them an Uber or something like that. <laughs> but so here, here's the thing, though. This this is this is what I'm hearing. So we started this off, and I heard a few things. Lonzo was looking for security, and that's not a bad thing. Right. When we understand Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Lonzo was missing that security piece. Right. And when it comes down to it, when you and you can tell me if I'm wrong, by the way, that you don't have to take what I'm saying as a gospel. Um, this is just what I'm gathering. But Tony represented security for you in the beginning. Like she was safe. You had a place to lay your head. Yes. Um, yeah. She made you feel comfortable and you didn't have to worry about the troubles that you were dealing with when it comes down to the world. Right. Tony was looking for companionship. Right. Um, and he represented companionship. Um, so the thing that he was looking for, not only were you providing, but you were providing it joyfully. Um, and in some place along the way, um, and Tony, if I'm wrong, by all means, just let me know. Um, okay. Um, in some place along the way, like you guys said, we did not have that conversation. And when we didn't have that conversation, I didn't know what, you know, what the end state was. I didn't know what he was looking for. Um, at the end of the day on this side I'm thinking I'm giving her what she's looking for because the security that she was providing looked like she was happy in doing so and so I'm thinking I'm being everything that she wanted but then on this hand she got to the point where she started seeming like she wasn't as fulfilled as it was in the beginning am, am, I, am I still in, am, I, am I still in the ballpark can you hear me Alonzo? yeah uh, well I'm, my thing was well i have to take responsibility because i messed up and i didn't know my role as a man and that was like the biggest piece of the puzzle Mm -hmm. it was like i was used to just being free and dating this chick and this girl here that girl there and no we didn't have the whole like i never had that sit down talk like you know you do whatever when you meet that one person Mm -hmm. that's that special person and you hold Mm -hmm. on to them and you got to let everybody else go and you focus on that one yeah and i i dropped the ball when we was married and you know and i've always had you know i call them well dr tony i call them um hyenas (laughs) like from the lion king that's what she called them (laughs) and um you know and like they, they still beat me down but you know, I never had that problem of finding nobody, but just finding somebody stable that I can actually hold on to. Yeah. And, you know, I messed up on that and I'll admit it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's OK. And and again, thank you for sharing that, um, because trust me, not one of us that's on this panel or listening, not any of us ever did it 100 percent perfectly. We all messed up at some place along the way, um, regardless of what that looks like. I think a lot of times what we tend to do is we, in our mind, we rank structure what mess up looks like. So when we look at the big picture, some people say, well, if this person does this, this is a showstopper and an end state for me. Well, we got to realize that we cannot take the humanity out of this thing that we call a relationship. We are humans first, which means that we will error. And it's not intentional. I don't mean to harm you, right? right. Like you just said, I did not know. Here's the thing that I wanted to talk about or mention, because Uncle Junior, you mentioned it. You mentioned dating with intention. A lot of times we date with intention, but we don't date through attention. So we don't really pay the necessary level of attention to the other person so that we can honestly see them. And that's where we miss the mark a lot of times. And so we can be intentional all day long, but if I'm just intentional, but I'm not attentional, then the only thing I'm doing is making a relationship about me. And that will always make a relationship fail. 
what we have to understand is number one know who we are that's the first piece so i gotta i have to have that relationship with my mother and my father so they can help me identify my identity my identity is important because that helps me to create what we call a self-concept that concept becomes the lens in which i view the world you mentioned it and i didn't know yeah i, I didn't know you know what i'm saying and that's a very powerful statement and i and i think we mentioned uh, don't i don't i think you were on the last time i talked about this because I taught, a, I teach a class where I actually use the conversation between Moses and God. And then Moses asked God, well, who am I that I'm to go under Pharaoh, right? Well, the most mm -hmm. important portion, portion about that question is, who am I? That's what life's journey is all about. Everybody's trying to figure out who we are. And mm -hmm. having a clear understanding of who we are every step of the way gives us clarity. That clarity allows us to see the truth, not the truth through the lens of the bad understandings that we had in the past so that's all it is is you, you know and, and what we have to be careful with doing is sometimes what we end up doing is based upon the mistakes that we have then we'll go into what i tend to call self-judgment so we'll judge ourselves based upon the things that we didn't know and so it becomes a double, double negative that works against us and that leads into what we tend to call a limiting belief system so when we look at this whole you know this whole thing that we're talking about here we're talking about some information based upon parenting my father wasn't there i used to hate when my father come around because life got a whole lot stressful for me um that's mm -hmm. a big piece a big chunk that was missing out of both of your lives because that equates to your identity I've, I've had this conversation with my father as well you you have to understand whenever one parent is missing that child spends a large portion of their life trying to fill in the blanks that other parent has the blanks so it's in, it's important for them to come back at some point to try to help me to understand it because here's what happens if i don't understand it i'm going to find this person and see if i can get some information from this person mm -hmm. this person see if i can get some information from this person this person and you know who these people are people who don't look like me opposite sex so and that's what ends up happening and, and it's and again it's not a bad thing it's an awareness thing once we become aware of something then accountability kicks in and this is the other part that i like to talk about we all have ability i don't care what you know a person's skill set is we all have ability but the most important ability that we have is responsibility accountability and availability i'm sorry there it is accountability um, responsibility and availability right we must be accountable to the things that we know i'm, I'm sorry we have, must be responsible for the things that we know but i can't be responsible for the things that i don't know so the relationship that I have, that person is accountable to me to help me to understand things I don't know. So in that, we have the necessary conversations that we're supposed to be having. That's one of the reasons why I asked, what would that conversation look like, right? In through that conversation, you help me to become accountable. You help me to understand the thing I don't know. That's accountability. Now, once you bring it to my attention, I now have responsibility. And what we must learn to do for each other is to be available, availability. And sometimes, you know, you know, life happens. You got work, you got kids, you got friends, you know, you got all this other stuff going on. But what I have to do is become intentional about the other person. So that person gets a dedicated portion of my day. You know, come as the old folks used to say, come hella high water. Everything else takes a back seat. But when mm -hmm. this happens, cell phone goes aside. TV goes off, you have my undivided attention. When I started off by saying that I sense a strong connection between you two, it's little things that I picked up. Tony mentioned, you know, because she mentioned that she filed for a divorce, right? But she also mentioned in the conversation that, and I don't know who you were having this conversation with, but you also mentioned that he signed the papers. So oh, Alonzo did. We went to the bank and had a notary notarized mm -hmm. and everything we were mm -hmm. fine and he signed it before the ink could draw on the paper yeah so <laughs> if you never but if you never gave him the papers he couldn't sign it what <laughs> well yeah but i felt that it was time and yeah. he was doing his own thing and then once i stepped out the marriage and cheated i was like i never forget i was standing in the living room yeah by myself and i said dirk tonia this is not you yeah. and if you don't stop somebody's gonna get hurt yeah. you know somebody's gonna get hurt so uh, i did a no fault divorce uh, gotcha. and uh 
he was shocked. He was like, well, why you didn't tell me? I could have went with you. And he was going through physical therapy then. Yeah. And um, I just told him I won't be going with you to physical therapy today. And, yeah. you know, it was like most time I would go. But that day I didn't go. And um, I saw my attorney and everything at the ball rolling because of me. You can't make nobody stay with you if they don't want to stay with you. But the thing is, in my mind now, I have to work on the trauma of it. Of course. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, because I don't understand why a man is still there for his ex-wife. I mean, because we don't have no children together. And it blows a lot of people's mind. It's like, what's going on here? You know, what are you two doing? You mm-hmm. know? So, you know, that's something I have to get understanding. But I tell people we are each other's children because we grew up together. Yeah. You know, we struggle together. Yeah. But then also you can't use that as an excuse either when we both signed the papers. Yeah. You know, we both signed the papers and I understand that. So you also have to make common sense out of that too, because if we keep saying that, that's what's going to keep us tied together even more because he's like, yep, yep. And, and you know, we can relate. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like, we remember when we drove to Greensboro on the last day of car insurance. That <laughs> car insurance was about to collapse. <laughs> and we drove together. And I don't know, we have so many silly memories together. And uh, I'm going to tell you all the most funniest thing. When we didn't have a car, and I didn't realize that you had to pay mileage if you got a U-Haul truck. So I told him, I said, you know what? I said, I know how we can get transportation to go get a job. We can rent a U-Haul truck. <laughs> the nineteen ninety nine, right? <laughs> that was creative, though. I'm not gonna lie. That is very creative. Yeah, mm-hmm. because I was like that nineteen ninety nine, we just paid it twenty dollars. And he was like, No tone. He said, You gotta pay for the mileage, you know? <laughs> Or I'm like, well, we can go at least test drive a car and just go put this in application. So I mean, just crazy things like that. I ain't never thought about that. I remember, I remember one of our first cookouts. We was happy, you know, had the grill and the food and everything, and it started raining. So we didn't think nothing about it. We had a small one bedroom apartment, so food was cooking on the grill. We took the grill and everything inside the apartment and smoked out the whole apartment. The smoke alarm didn't go off. <laughs> we didn't have a oh, smoke alarm. It off. Yeah. <laughs> and we it had the sense. door open. Yeah. Mm. Just cooking yeah. outside the apartment. Are we sure to see it. Look, that was the new George Foreman then. <laughs> I yeah. think that was bad. Cause I, I was in Colorado and I had mine on the on the deck and had a little small deck. And man, that thing smoked up everything. <laughs> I had it in the house. <laughs> Yeah, we did. We were straight hood. <laughs> Look, we had everything ghetto except for the couch outside on the on the well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it hood. on the thing. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call it hood. You were you were you were learning. That's all it was. Yeah. You were learning. Yeah. yeah. But see, we, we take things like that with us and I think um that's what keeps you hanging on to each other too, you know, because I try to understand. I've even questioned God about it. I'm like, God, how is it that, you know, I got with a guy that just wasn't ready to be with a woman like me, but yet we're still connected together. Like I said, we talk three, what, three or four times a day. Yeah. We're texting. <laughs> um, when we get out from here, I'm gonna be like, Alonzo, what you think? How did it go? Did you enjoy <laughs> coach? Uh, how about Garfield? You know, <laughs> I mean, that's just me, but yeah. um, I enjoyed it. You see how I kept on, you know, I said, Well, I'm gonna get with him. He'll come on the show, he'll come on the show. So, um, I like this setup and foundation so much better, um, because coach is licensed and. <laughs> I get my money straight, Coach. I definitely want to get in with you. Look, you can't talk with Lent. You gotta have that quiet money in your pocket. Well, yeah. <laughs> and it folds. Come, yeah. come talk to me first, so you can understand what that looked like. So, um, 
you know, um, I, I, I do know that I need help in that area. And the counselor that I see, she lost her husband. They were together for a long time. And she has the nice home and everything that he has left her in. You know, he prepared and they were high school sweethearts. So really, what can an elderly woman really tell me about a woman that's young and divorced, you know? So I really do need to seek counseling for that. And that would help me to better understand and also, you know, to use more wisdom in the guys I pick because they it's for some reasons like we don't want to talk about anything. You know, we like I said, we just after what we after we like you, you like me, we go out as always butterflies in the beginning. But then you start to see things about this person that you like, I don't like this person anymore. You know, like my last boyfriend's like, even though I still love him and everything, but it's like, there's things that I don't love about him no more. Things have really dwindled, you know, anger and just, you know, when people don't want to get their selves help, then that's not cool. And, you know, I can't have you snapping off on me, you know. <laughs> and I Satan. think that's when Satan to forget that yeah. wait a minute who you are too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and snap on you <laughs> yeah. you know people are a combination of the, every person makes up three people in one right whether we understand that or not so the person that you meet initially is not who they are that's the person that they believe they need to be um, yeah and, and this is in every situation every situation some of the best conversations I have with is, you know, conversation with organizations that want me to help them to find the right candidate to hire. Um, and so what I do is I ask situational questions to see how they respond, not so much how they respond, but facial expressions as well. Because the story that a person won't allow their mouth to tell me, their face will tell me. Um, so everybody is a combination of three people. The person that they think their environment is requiring of them, the core, which is that person that they really are, and then the mirror which is the person that they're trying to be. A lot of times what you'll find is that the mirror and the uh, mask, the first person, they kind of look the same, but not always 100% identical. The only way you ever get to the core is like my grandmother used to say when I was young, you got to learn to give time time, right? That was probably one of the most profound statements I've ever heard in my life. She said, baby, just give time time. I had no idea what she was talking about back then. Now I got it. So for me, I am never in a rush to get to the finish line. What we need to understand is that the finish line is not marriage. The finish line is death. So when we're talking to and getting to know a person, if they're not in it with me until the finish line, there's no need for us to hit that milestone we call marriage. Like, so when we type that conversation, what does, you know, your future look like and how do I factor into that? Right. Well, if you can't say that you see us sitting on my front porch, getting old, hollering at people from walking on my grass, then, mm. you know, that's just what it is. That's that's yeah. the end state for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm on the porch looking at my grandkids, bring their kids to the house and things of that nature. Yeah. I'm looking at, get off my grass, get off my grass. My baby's on the way. Yeah. If you don't see yourself sitting right there beside me, then okay, it's nice knowing you. We can still be friends though. We can be cordial. I mean, I'm, I'm good with it. But so we got to learn to allow time to time. And that conversation doesn't happen day one. That conversation may happen like right around month six when I've seen what you look like when you get angry. Because that's the part that's going to tell me the truth about you. All that other stuff was just, you know, you know, the, the uh, what do you call it? The kale around the salad, you know, the, the, the fluff, the, the, the feel, the, the stuff that, that makes it look good. That's what yeah. that stuff was in the beginning. I don't believe that stuff. It looked good and it sounded good. And that's the thing you're going to potentially present to my mom if you make it that far. But I need to see what happened when you get mad. What type of, what version of the Incredible Hulk you turn into? Yeah. Because when I see that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, when I see that, that helps me to understand if I really want to deal with that level of crazy. We all got it. Let's just be honest. We all got some crazy in us. And I'm joking when I use the word crazy, but I'm not. We yeah, all we got do. It. We all got it in us. But the question is, like you said, I can't stand. I'm not going to sit here and let you yell at me. That's just not going to happen. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, what do you look like when you get mad? Um, what does it look like after you get mad? Like, what does calming down look like? Do I have the ability to calm you down or when you or, or, or are you that type of person that need to leave the house and go take a drive or go to the sports bar or something? Like that? Those are important conversations to have. 
right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's why when I go through um, those coaching, you know, marital, premarital conversations and postmarital conversations, like so, you know, before marriage and after you've been married after a while, we sit down and we, it's 16 talking points that we talk about. We're talking about finances. We talk about family dynamics. We talk about sex. We talk about everything. Why? Because bad news don't get better with time. If you don't have the conversation, you're going to have the conversation later. You just decided to prolong it after y'all got married. But guess what? You still gonna have the conversation one way or the other. And so that's what that looks like in the beginning. 16 talking points. We talking mom and dad. We talking psychology. We talking emotional intelligence. We're talking everything because these are the things that we need to understand about the person that we're trying to spend the rest of our life with because that's ultimately what it is. We have to figure out, can we get to the point to where we can become one? And if we do come become one, what does that look like for us? I got what pastors look like, right? You know, pastors say, pastor, yeah, I got what pastors say. And we love pastor to death, but pastors, pastors preaching doctrine. We're talking, how do we apply doctrine to life? That's where the rubber meets the road. And let's be honest, that household next door, don't look like the household over here. They may do things differently. You know, the husband might be the cook over here and that works for them. And I'm 100% on board with that. Just like Antoine. Antoine got his own special pots. When that brother get married, that's yeah, what it is. Yeah, so, you know, these <laughs> are the favorite. Things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so that's why when I asked the question about that conversation, like what would it look like? Um, because here's the best part about the conversation I'm talking about. You guys lived it. You can probably answer the question for the other person right now. That's where that strong connection, I believe, comes from. I don't know. I just, <clears throat> my dad said there's always going to be me and him. Even at the end, it's going to be me and him. 